Your baby's shoulder is stuck on your pubic bone. He's in distress. I'm going to have to insert my hand and push the baby back in. And I'm going to do a C-section. Hold up. Hold up. That seems really intense for a first move for a shoulder dystocia. So let's discuss what is a shoulder dystocia and what you might expect if it happens to you during childbirth. A shoulder dystocia is when one or both of baby's shoulders get stuck in your pelvis during a vaginal delivery. There are some factors you can be aware of that might put you at a higher risk of a shoulder dystocia. They're going to include a larger baby, a smaller pelvis, a baby that's not optimally positioned for a vaginal delivery, or a previous shoulder dystocia. But that said, is there anything you can do to prevent a shoulder dystocia? Not really. Now, if your baby is measuring larger or you've had a previous shoulder dystocia, your provider may want to monitor you a little bit closer with more frequent ultrasounds just to check in on that baby and how they're doing. But really, in the scheme of things, it's really hit or miss for shoulder dystocia. So you're pushing your baby out and boom, shoulder dystocia. What can you expect? First thing you can expect, and I want you to be aware of this, it's going to get loud and it's going to get chaotic. That's because your primary nurse is probably hammering on the call bell or pulling it out of the wall because they want as many experienced staff in the room with them as quickly as they can get them there because this is an obstetrical emergency. Now, several things are gonna happen. They're gonna happen really quickly. First thing that's gonna happen, your legs are going to go back and open. We're doing this because we're trying to maximize the amount of space within that pelvis so that baby can hopefully free up their own shoulder and be delivered the rest of the way. But while this is happening, you're likely going to have a staff member on top of you. And the reason they're up there is they're applying something called suprapubic pressure. That means that they're using their hand and a downward force to kind of push over the lower part of your abdomen. What they're trying to do is they're trying to manually free up that front shoulder of baby from around that pelvic bone so that they can then be delivered. If those two maneuvers are not working, your provider is going to kind of reach in and try to turn baby. And they are also going to try to deliver manually the back arm of baby so that baby can come out the rest of the way. If all of these things are not working, they're going to consider an episiotomy, and that's to try to make the vaginal opening larger in case that's the holdup. And failing all of those things, we're going to flip you right onto all fours. Again, that's to change the angle of the pelvis, make the pelvis a little bit wider to hopefully give baby enough room to be delivered. Now, in that video, you saw that they pushed baby back in and went to the operating room. This is a last ditch effort, a true last ditch effort, because when we push baby back in and go for those stat C sections, the outcomes, they are really not that great, guys. So, we do all of those other things first, and usually they do work, but on the off chance that we have to go to the back, it will be very quick and it will be a stat C-section.